Back in Death Valley, just about ready for the second half. 13-6 Clemson leading South Carolina. In the 100th renewal of this rivalry, it took a long time to get all the chippiness out. There were um, about a half dozen late hit penalties early on, but they seem to have that out of their system now, and it settled down into the type of game we expected it to be, pretty low scoring. Still playing hard, and South Carolina's going to get this football on the kickoff. They must do more with Andrew Pinnock. Nine carries, 64 yards for the big guy, 7.1 yards per carry. They're going to have to use him more, Mike. They are for Clemson. Keep letting Whitehurst do what he's doing. He does a nice job stepping up in the pocket. He's accurate with his throws. And the two uh, field goals that they got should have been touchdowns. His big yep. guys need to help him uh, yep. and hang out of the ball. He's got 15 completions. Should have been 17 for two touchdowns to go along with it. He's doing very well in the pocket. Let's check in down below with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, at halftime in the Clemson locker room, Tommy Bowden basically challenged his football team, particularly his seniors. Said, last time you will play on this field in the orange and purple, the final 30 minutes at offense. If we protect Whitehurst, we will move the football. Defensively, if they don't score, they don't win. And he, he mentioned an article he talked to the team about last night. A major newspaper said Clemson is not tough enough to win in the second half. you got to show them you are tough. Ryan Brewer returning the second half kickoff. Moves through a couple of tacklers and reaches the 29. The 1 800 call ATT ESPN game track. And uh, once we get that out, we're halfway through the third quarter. Pinnock, nine carries for 64 yards. He's been effective. They may need to use him more in the second half. Eight for eight start for Charlie Whitehurst, and he finished 15 of 23 for 154 yards. Most of his damage right there between the hash marks. Andrell Pinkins, four of eight for 48 yards. Nine carries, 64 yards. Blake fake scrambling and has to throw it away. Now there's an awful lot of discussion among football analysts about how important the first five minutes of the third quarter is. And it is. It's not as important as a lot of people think. But for South Carolina, in their present offensive state of affairs, it is absolutely crucial they do something with this football. The definition of a good drive is to score points or pump the opposition inside their 20-yard line. One of those two things has to happen for South Carolina here. Benick on the bench. They got only 24 total yards in the second quarter. Their last four possessions, 11 plays, 20 yards. Going deep, wide open, Williamson is going to score. Touchdown, Gamecock, 70 yards. And the first South Carolina touchdown pass since October 19th against LSU. How long it had been. And you certainly didn't expect it with the new quarterback in there to be taking their shots down the field. See, they tried to roll down on the first play. You figure they're going to come back with the run, but then we see Pinnock on the sidelines. So they said, all right, we're going to take it deep. And man, it's just absolutely burned by Williamson. Easy score for South Carolina. That's coming out of the gate strong right there. Bad groin and all. A two-time state champion in the 100 and the 200 meters. True freshman out of Jackson, South Carolina. And he's being penalized for celebrating and doing his little gesture. And it's going to make for a, a very interesting extra point attempt here. Coach Holtz already delivered his lecture. Now Skip Holtz, the offensive coordinator, reinforcing what the head coach said. This is not the business of drawing attention to yourself. In college football, that's not what it's all about. They've been watching those guys on Sunday too much. And it may end up costing them a game. It could. This is now a 35-yard point after. Needing it to tie. Weaver, luckily for Troy Williamson, is good. But you see, that PAT missed quite often. You wonder why in the world these guys make these mistakes. They watch television on Sunday and Monday night. If every NFL receiver does this when he scores, what do you think these kids are going to do? The NFL guys have a responsibility. It's foolish. He's happy with the touchdown, an out-of-character play for South Carolina, that's for sure. 
And you know, you score the touchdown, turn around and enjoy it with your teammates. I think it's the best way to celebrate. You celebrate. It. It's fine to celebrate, yep. but do it with your buddies. With your teammates. Absolutely. That's the whole deal. The NFL is out of hand. The guys have lost it. They celebrate more over a sack than we used to over the national championship. You mean you don't like the Sharpie coming out of the sock and signing the ball? Sharpie? How about if it pokes somebody in the eye? What is that guy thinking about? A Sharpie in his sock? Well, I'm still amazed at the long ball by South Carolina. I mean, it's. Well, here's what happened. South Carolina lost literally all of its speed. Williamson was hurt. Right. Their other speed receivers have been hurt all these weeks. It's not as if they don't have good players. They haven't had their fastest guys on the field. Now they do. And that's when Lou Holtz took over the offense. They thought without the receivers, they went more to an eye formation. Lou felt he was in a better position to call the offense in that situation. Found out or realized it was a mistake. They started getting some receivers back. The offense went back to Skip Holtz. And there you see a play over the top. 20 yards over their previous four possessions. One throw goes 70, and they tie it at 13. Jerry Bowers' kickoff will not be returned by Justin Miller. And what did Lou Holtz have to say at the half, Dr. Jerry Punch? Guys, as you might expect, Lou very, very frustrated about the foolish penalties. Very atypical for a Lou Holtz coach team to be that undisciplined. Very concerned about the penalties, which gave up a yardage, allowed drives to stay alive in the first half. He was going to address that in the locker room, but his big concern at halftime was the fact that three defensive backs, three of his four starting DBs, have been banged up. Dante Robinson with an ankle, DeAndre Island with a hip flexor, and Muhammad have been taken into the locker room at halftime. Very concerned about the DBs here in the second half. Well, they just got the wide receivers healthy again. Now they lose the secondary. That kind of year for Lou Holtz. Charlie Whitehurst under center and then to give to Bernard Rambert who has the only Clemson touchdown tonight. Well Whitehurst we talked about his accuracy in the first half and didn't get a help a couple of times. Well that one was going out of the back of the end zone. This one needed to be caught by McKelvey. They're right in the hands of Hamilton. Got to make that catch. Two in the end zone should have been two touchdowns. It said they got two field goals for it. We'll see how that comes into play later in the game. Charlie Whitehurst in his fourth start has already broken 15 Clemson freshman records and 23 total school yeah. records. Eight, 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 eight school and team records. That is a start. <laughs> yeah. It would be very interesting. Excuse me. Go ahead, Dave. Very interesting to see if Clemson's going to be able to exploit the injuries in South Carolina's secondary. And here's one of those crucial, there's old David Whitehurst, one of those crucial third down situations coming up. David Whitehurst was great on third down because he could run and throw. Where are you? You're somewhere in the side. I'm there? trying to get to David to hug him, too. That was a great <laughs> comeback against the Saints. I still remember it. Up the middle. And Chad Jasmine. Set out against Maryland down. because of the groin problem. Carries for the first down. And the little center, 53, Tommy Sharp, that we featured at the top, did a nice job of clearing the way for that first down. Something I love about undersized centers. I don't know why. It's a great story. I mean, a walk on. This is a college story right there. A walk yep. on. He's not going to go and play in the NFL. You know, why? He, I, I don't. <laughs> You're right. He's, <laughs> but but he's, he's doing a heck of a job. He certainly for his team. is. That, that man he's playing over right here is going to play on in the NFL. Yep. And right now, Sharp's been doing a heck of a job on Langston, Langston Moore. Moore. Good play. Low snap. Rambert out of an arm tackle. Close to a first down. We check in with Reese Davis. Boy, thanks for the gift. Saw that happen a couple times today. Perfect snaps. Punters just flat dropped and turned into disaster. Here's second down and one, Clemson. Sharp eats four meals a day. So, Mike, you say you don't think he'll play in NFL. Keeps that up. He may gain his 50 pounds. <laughs> Swing pass, Hamilton for the first down. Tommy Sharp 
was given absolutely no scholarship offers. And in fact, the likes of Georgia Southern and Valdosta State were interested in him only as a walk on. So he walks on and ends up starting at Clemson. They call him the ankle biter. <laughs> He's trying to bite Langston Moore on the ankle there. He almost clipped him, which would have not been good. As soon as we bragged on him, he had a little low snap. That last couple of snaps were perfect. Tommy Sharp out there battling all night long. Listening for the call here. He's a, He's a highly sophisticated system that has slowed down noticeably over a couple of years ago when they were trying to snap the ball within 10 or 15 seconds. The defense has started to use that rapidity against the Tiger offense. Rambert fights his way across midfield. And the way they were doing that is interesting. Because they would see the quarterback signal the man in motion and then change their defenses. And then the offense is in a bad play they can't get out of. So how do they readjust it? Well, what they've done is they've begun to give the heel kick, which is to make the defense, the defense responds to the quarterback's heel kick, thinking that he's going to send his man in motion when in fact that's just a phony heel kick to get the defense to deploy. He sees where the defense is going to go, looks to the sideline, gets the play from upstairs, and then calls it. All that's going on as we speak. That's why I see him looking over at the sideline. They're singling in. Where to go. They're coming after him, gets it off, and Rambert hit immediately. And Muhammad, who limped off, as reported by Dr. Jerry, back in for the tackle. Jerry? Guys, they, you mentioned the false heel kick they've been given uh, during the first half to have the guys stem or move in the secondary, and then they call the play. Rick Stockstow actually told me he was going to wait sometimes and call the play after the original heel kick and not even call the play initially. At halftime, a lot of concern that South Carolina had gotten the signals, so they totally adjusted the offensive signals to a backup set at halftime. So that's an adjustment to the adjustment <laughs> of the adjustment. <laughs> Got to be smart to be on offense. You do these days a lot more than what we had to. I'll have to confess that. Here's third and eight. Plenty of time. Again, open over the middle. Rambert, another first down. And one of those, I go back to it again and again, South Carolina's inability to stop third down and long. Third and five plus. Look at all the area in, in the middle of the field here. They blitz tons of area. Jonathan Martin, you see number 30, dropping very deep. Just dumped the ball off all kind of area to run to easily get the first down for Rember. When you blitz, you got to get there. When you send people, you got to get heat in the quarterback's face. Good job by the Clemson offensive line to keep Whitehurst clean. So the 16th Tiger first down. They're 5 of 9 on third down conversion. They reach the Gamecock 42. Play fake. Swing pass again. Hamilton this time makes the first man Ted Crawford miss. And picks up 11. Got to break down. Got to break down. If you're going to come up, he went for the big hit. Instead of breaking town, down and making sure he could make the tackle. Ted Crawford coming out of the zone. More safe defense. Supposedly safe from the part of South Carolina. Derek Hamilton doesn't even have to make a move because Crawford's got his head down and he's diving out of control. Makes it easy for the Clemson receiver. Hamilton second in the ACC. 140 all-purpose yards per game. We've seen him return kicks. He's also a 10-plus yards per carry rusher on the end around. This again, Chad Jasmine. And he fights for maybe a yard. Clemson's been mixing in the run pretty well today and finding some success, and that's only going to help the passing game if you can do that. Whitehurst does a nice job when he just has to pass. Look at Michael Kane, the quarterback. Oh, uh, well, here's Brad, Brad, Scott, Brad over Brad here. Brad Scott, number one. Okay, number two over here. Not a very good two. There we go. Talked about my writing on that line before. Yeah, Mine was better than yours. Michael Kane, okay, first former NC State yes, head coach. Boys, boys. Did I have to sit between you two again. Wasn't Dave? Mine was better than his, wasn't it? I call that a dead <laughs> heat. <laughs> Second down. Deep ball to the back of the end zone and incomplete intended for Aries Curry. Speed merchant sophomore from Columbia. 
And a part of Tommy Bowden's prize recruiting class, especially at the receiver spot, they loaded up in 2001. And here was, here's what South Carolina's doing. Charlie Strong knows that Clemson's nearing field goal range, so he's going to man up with everybody. Everybody's in man coverage. Here, here, here. That's the free safety. Here and here. And they're blitzing, trying to get to him, just daring him to go deep. And it works. Except that they did not get to the quarterback. The offensive line's gotten better and better at protecting Whitehurst as the game has gone on. Another must stop for the Carolina defense. And Whitehurst again going middle, overthrowing Robinson this time. And he got belted. Well, there's Sean Faison out there again playing free safety, not the spur. So he's playing center field. He's just hanging back, breaking on the ball, and he's going for the big hit right here. Man free. Everybody's got a man. Faison is free, and he comes in and he's going to try to lay the leather to him. Two good defensive plays for South the, Carolina. The last two throws, we should note, all have both been high. High of their mark. 47 yard try by Aaron Hunt, who has made his last 12 in a row. And the streak's going to come to an end. Pulled it. Just the fourth miss of the year for Aaron Hunt, Jr. from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. So the Gamecock defense gets a key stop on the third down, and they preserve a 13 all time. Tied up middle of the third quarter. I said it and I mean it. I will sit between the two of you. If I have to hey, take my belt I, off, I'll I do had it. Was mechanical hit. drawing. No. Uh, Mr. Weeby at Georgia Tech. Shake hands. There's no way. Okay, there we go. Right. That's better. Shake your hands with him. Come on, friends <laughs> all the way around. Just respect my elders, that's all. Kenny Irons. Upended. What yep. were you fighting over to begin with? I don't even drawing. I, I drew on the back line of the end zone and I missed the end of it at first. And you didn't even draw and, within the line. And, that, and Bill drew a really bad, awful number two. You couldn't even tell what it was. So well, I, don't, I don't think I would have said that. <laughs> OK, let, let, let's do this. Let's get back to football. There we go. And South Carolina has done a great job. The early part of the third quarter to get themselves not only back into the game, but tied. And this is going to be a heck of a football game. Dinkins, Williamson, and it'll be third and one. Let's check in quickly with Reese. Ryan 
That brings up third and one for the game cut. Boy, and all of a sudden, that Death Valley is not too scary at all. They're shut out by Alabama, getting shut out tonight by Ole Miss. Well, none of the Death Valleys, including Tuscaloosa, have, have held form. Full house. And Pimmick had to cut back to get that first down. His initial thought was going to get him caught a yard shy. But the senior found the open spot, and the drive will continue. 13 all, the usual 85,000 plus in the 100th meeting all time between South Carolina and Clemson. Our Pennzoil storyline showing you the night that Whitehurst has had, mostly short stuff, 1929, 176 through the air. Pinkins 141 total yards. Each team with a turnover. A lot of late hit penalties early, but it has finally settled out into the type game we expected low scoring and close and this is Brian Mann slipping off senior from Alkalu South Carolina who earlier tonight got his sixth interception of the year second best in the ACC. Yeah. You don't want to see anybody get hurt but least of all Clemson seeing one of their corners go down they have two outstanding corners in Mance and Miller although Mance did give up the touchdown earlier he is a veteran warrior back there they don't need to lose him. Tough time for uh, Brian Mann stating back to last October he lost his older brother Kenny who was killed when he fell asleep at the wheel returning from the game in Raleigh. Well, the Mance family has been through. Up to the 43. 22 Kenny Irons your ball carrier. Is um, Dakis Terman on the carry. Pick up two yards at second and eight. Uh, Kenny would love to be here, is what that means on his wristband. No doubt he would. Yep. So Brian getting checked as Jamal Fudge, redshirt freshman, replaces him in the secondary. And Pinkins going deep again for Williamson. Caught again down to the 13. They go after Fudge and they burn him for 45 yards. Williamson, a 70 yard touchdown, and this 45 yarder. Well, here's the guy they're getting back, and he is their speed receiver. We saw him run by Mance. And now we're, we're seeing him run by Fudge, and the ball is actually a little underthrown. If this one's thrown on the mark, that's another touchdown. This is the fastest receiver they have. And you and I watched him warm up, and he was dropping balls in warm ups. Yes. He's obviously gotten himself together. And man, can he fly. Four catches, 140 yards, and the touchdown. Irons spinning down to the eight. And Clemson has got themselves a tiger by the tail, but it's not the tiger that they wished for. It's that game cop. And these guys. Are here for the duration, folks. This will be one heck of a football game because they've been able to exploit weaknesses that Clemson had not shown earlier in the year, and South Carolina has a strength back that it hasn't had in five weeks. And they're they're showing their speed. Some, they're showing some confidence in Pinkins too to throw oh, the yeah. ball. Well, Pinkins loves it. Down the road from Miller, the ACC interception leader with seven. They haven't had much business tonight. Irons again. Off the first tackle should have first and goal at the four. And doctor, what do you know about Brian Mance? Well, they desperately need him back on the field for one thing, guys. But on the sideline, the good news is they examined his right knee, the ligaments, everything seems to be intact. They're trying to get him to walk it off a little bit here. Danny Poole and company, Clemson head trainer, trying to get him loosened up. They desperately need him back in the secondary for that coverage. That's a senior watching a redshirt freshman replace him and immediately burned for 45 yards to set up first and goal full house at the four. Give it to Dacus Terman the fullback and another true freshman who set the Georgia high school single season rushing record two years ago over 3100 yards he broke Herschel Walker's 1979 record. 
been interesting, Bill. We both agree that we thought Pinnock would should get the load of the carries at 260 pounds, but it's been you saw Terman there, but it's been Kenny Irons, the freshman, getting the bulk of the carries this quarter. Well, I just know that I would not want to tackle Pinnock, and you wouldn't either, because you admitted it down there during yep. warm up, and he's made yards every time he's touched it. Pinnock at right half, Ruhr at left half, and it is Pinnock yeah. touchdown. I rest my case. <laughs> Great job by Ryan Brewer, the all purpose football player. Mr. Ohio football in his senior year in high school four years ago, number 21, playing on a bad ankle all this year. Nice job of blocking to get the big fella some running room along with the lineman up front. Weaver's extra point is just barely good. He almost hooked that one. It's 20 to 13, South Carolina. Andrew Pinnock's fifth touchdown of the year, 27th of his South Carolina career, third all time. Very few have been more satisfying than this one. The Lady Tiger basketball team will tip off their 2002 home season this coming Tuesday with a match ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, presented by the United States Postal Service and in part by Pennzoil. The motor oil you choose matters. Pennzoil Motor Oil, developed for the way you drive. Pennzoil, we're driving protection. In the Gamecocks' four game losing streak, third quarters have been a major problem. Not tonight. They have outscored Clemson 14 to nothing. Since halftime. Here's a return by the prize freshman, Justin Miller, who, if he had enough returns, would be leading the nation at about 38 yards per. And let's check in quickly with Reese. Watching. End around Derek Hamilton. And one more look at the Andrew Pinnock touchdown. One of the great wishbone plays, the wishbone counter play. The fullback goes away from the action, and you'll see here that Ryan Brewer is going to have a great block leading here, a great block coming down by the guard here, and it's a walk in. The big man didn't even have to run over anybody. Brewer with a nice job of knocking that linebacker back. Great football play. The Memorial Stadium falls quiet as the Tigers trail by seven. A 
left and leading by seven at the half. They swing Rambert out of the backfield. Muhammad misses the tackle. Bernard Rambert across midfield of the 47. Let's check in with Dr. Jarrett. Guys, Edgar Pinnock who just scored the Gamecock touchdown. His work ethic's an inspiration to his teammates. When everyone else comes off the practice field early in the week, Pinnock stays out for an extra 20 or 30 minutes. He runs sprints. He runs agility drills. He even has a manager spray the football with a hose to work on wet ball drills. This young man truly is driven to be the best that he can be. Now six behind George Rogers, who has the all-time leader in touchdowns. Boy, and George Rogers carried it a whole yep. lot more often than Pitt. Oh yes, yep. about 30 times a game for George. First and ten, Clemson fighting from behind. Final two minutes of the third quarter. And Whitehurst again. Throwing out of the backfield, this time it's Yusuf Kelly and Jermaine Lemon tees off on him. And the Carolina defenders have had some easy shots on these passes. Well, and, and it took a linebacker to finally make that tackle because we've already seen Takei Muhammad miss a corner coming up, Ted Crawford miss coming up. This time the linebacker comes up, one on one situation, and he doesn't miss. He was a little earlier. <laughs> yeah, just a bad, but the, the cornerbacks, the two we saw with Muhammad and Crawford were bad. They're not breaking down, yeah, they stand in front. They need to come under control and just just get some cloth and get the guy on the ground. I'm sure Charlie Strong will have some words or has had some words for them in that regard. Out of time. Loss of four, two on the play clock. Just in time to snap to Whitehurst. And plenty of time to look again into the middle of Hamilton. Over and over. Clemson receivers break free between the hash marks. 17 yards on a first down. Monday Night Countdown provides up to the minute NFL news, comprehensive analysis, and live interviews. All the news from the best in the business, beginning at 7.30 Eastern, leading up to Monday Night Football. And Al Michaels, John Madden, in San Francisco this week for the battle between the Niners and the Eagles. Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern. Well, you think that uh, San Fran's going to put eight or nine in the box just to stop their running game and say, hey, Hey, Philly, if you're going to beat us, we're going to think Coy Detmer is going to have to do that now that Donovan McNabb is done for at least the rest of the regular season after playing the entire game on a broken ankle. How can that happen with modern medicine and the ability to x-ray players x-rayed. during the game? They flat out, in my opinion, should have x-rayed. Not that it would have. You know, they got lucky and nothing happened worse, but they should have x-rayed at some point in that game. Ty Hill carried for two. And now they have a reverse pass. Tony Elliott scrambles and has to throw it away. Boy, was that ever sniffed out well. Well, it was Carolina sniffed defender. out by the referee. Yeah. You see, the guy, they got in that steam, unusual formation. It's, a, uh, it's essentially a double-double wing. The referee is standing in his normal position, and he's the one that Destruct, uh, destruct to the play. Two holes will take help anywhere he can get it. Trying to end a four game losing streak. A lot of help in that third quarter from freshman Troy Williamson and senior Andrew Pinnock, and they lead by seven headed to the fourth.
and uh, Rodriguez, Rodriguez Wilson went in. Langston Moore's out as well. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I think they did it, though, because I think they're going to play. Final resting place of legendary Clemson coach Frank Howard. And from that vantage point, he and his wife, you figure somehow know what's going on on Frank Howard Field here in Memorial Stadium, Death Valley. 84,000 the attendance tonight for the 100th meeting of the Tigers and Gamecocks. We begin the fourth quarter with a strike over the middle for Aries Curry down near the 10 yard line again at 22. Now that was, Curry made the catch. Rodriguez Wilson was in the coverage. Corey Jenkins came out of the game. Wilson came in. They were going man coverage. Wilson's a little small, and they might have done that thinking he could cover Curry better because he was in for Jenkins, and Curry had the nice inside route on him. So Wilson comes in for Jenkins, but can't make the stop, can't make the defensive play. First and 10, not quite goal to go. Railing. 20 to 13. Rambert pulled down, no gain. Jeremiah Garrison, the linebacker, breaking through. And the 1 800 call ATT. The ESPN game track through three quarters. In his second start, Hankins, big shot was 70 yards for the touchdown. The jump start the third quarter for Troy Williamson and then the touchdown by Pennick is 27th in a Carolina uniform to break the tie. I just try to make another tie. Whitehurst to the end zone incomplete. And a blitzing Jonathan Martin hitting Whitehurst just a hair before he got rid of it. Those hybrid position players that they call Spurs at South Carolina. They're called bandits and rovers and other systems, strong safeties. Jonathan Martin missed the tackle earlier. He came off the edge just now and really rushed Whitehurst. A nice call by Charlie Strong that caused the errant throw. So here's a third and 10. Comes in tonight, six of 11 converting third down. Hands in orange on their feet to watch this one from the 11. Whitehurst chased, gets away from Crawford, keeps it at the sideline, touchdown! Corey Jenkins came back on the field for that play for South Carolina. He had contain on that side. Nobody touched him. You have to aim at the upfield hip of the quarterback. He's going to spin out of there. Whitehurst does a great job of it. Tight ropes it down into the end zone. Corey Jenkins has got to keep contain. The quarterback, the free safety, to spur, lost containment. Aaron Hunt ties it at 20. So well, we've got a fairly typical South Carolina Clemson game. Back and forth we go, and Whitehurst has brought the Tigers back to a dead heat.
Games like this happen all the time in this series. And in 1977, Clemson jumped out to a 24 nothing lead. They fell behind 27 24 in the fourth quarter. And then Jerry Butler making what fans voted the most important play in Clemson history, holding a 24 yard touchdown from Steve Fuller with 49 seconds to go. And the Tigers won 31 27. They got a bit of the Gator Bowl that year. Clemson's first bowl game in 18 years, and it kicked off a terrific run in Tiger football history. Brewer returning and as he crosses to the middle of the field he finds some room and out to the third. We may have an ending like that in store for us tonight. Thirteen and a half minutes to go in a back and forth 100th meeting. Gamecocks 20 Tigers 20. There you go. I'm going to start on the comment about Charlie. Jerry, this is Bill. Jerry. I hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Bill. Tell David that I said that uh, Charlie looked an awful lot like a young David Whitehurst going down that sideline. <laughs> Bill said you look like an awful lot like a young David Whitehurst going down that sideline. It just got a lot more talent than I had. <laughs> this mama must have been a fan. Uh, there you go. <laughs> it's funny in all this stuff. With the, she says, she has, he has them all. You know, everybody wants to talk to me. Yeah, he yeah. has them all. We're going to come together. We're going to come together in a minute. Okay. Get a little closer. Okay. Back at Clemson Memorial Stadium moments ago, redshirt freshman Charlie Whitehurst tiptoed down the sideline to tie it up here in this rivalry game. And I'm with his dad, David Whitehurst, and David's going to be awfully proud of your young man. What an effort tonight. Well, I am proud of him. When you play a, a rivalry school, school like this, it's always going to be a street fight in a 60-minute game. We've got another quarter to play, and we've just got to make the best of it. Coaches commented earlier in the week that they were very impressed with his toughness and his dad has done a great job. How do you teach a young man to stand in the pocket an extra second or two knowing he's going to get the he's going to get a lick in the chops yet he can complete the pass. Well he's had good coaching up here and I tried to teach him the same thing that coach Starr tried to teach us and it takes a man to play this game and I didn't know what he's talking about at first but it's physical and mental toughness to get out there and execute and that's what I've tried to teach him. Three starts he's improved significantly in his game. Where do you think he's improved the most. Well I can't really put my finger on one thing his uh, technique is pretty good but he has to get out here and play and play the play and execute and, and gain experience that's where he can learn the most. David thanks for coming down. Thank you Jim. Guys. Well Eric Kimry the number three quarterback just sneaking into the game to replace Pinkins and then we got a flag. False start against the offense. Five Still second down. You can't use that old saw. Well, a new quarterback and the cadence was changed because they were in the gun. There is no cadence. There's no excuse for a lot. The linemen have got to sit in there and show poise on both teams now as you come down the stretch in this rivalry game. Kimry has produced in the past. Late in a Mississippi State game two years ago, he came in and won it. An interesting timing of this change. And he just does get that in Pennock's neighborhood. 
Let's check in with Reese Davis. Just a real interesting timing, isn't it, to get Pinkins replaced by Kemry here on a third and 11. And it was a second and six before the mark off. Swings it out, and that was never going to turn into anything. Pennock caught it almost immediately, took a knee. What about that change? Well, the only thing I can think of is that there's something wrong with Pinkins physically. There's no other reason that you would substitute. He's been playing beautifully. He's thrown every kind of ball in addition to running with authority. So I, I don't know. Looks fine. Yeah, if, if there's nothing wrong with him, I would really have to question why they're doing it. I, I would agree with you, Bill. You would think something has to be wrong with him to make the change there. Well, he was shaking his head as if there was something with his eyes or his head just now. Short cut. Hamilton will start off. The Tiger offense in good position at the 42, just a 32 yarder by Tyler Dean. 11.50 to go. And how long will Pinkins be out? That is the question right now for Carolina fans. ESPN's College Football Saturday Night, presented by the United States Postal Service and in part by the new 2003 Jaguar S-Type. Jaguar, the art of performance. Well, there may not be a bowl for Carolina if they don't pull this one out. It's 20 to 20 as the Tigers take over their 42. 11.50 to play, Whitehurst. Steps up, a strike again to Hamilton. To the Gamecock 36. And Jerry, what do you know about Pinkins and why he was replaced by Kimry? Today they had no choice. Dondrell Pinkins took a lick in the helmet and uh, was a little groggy. Got a mild concussion, a little foggy. Came to the sidelines, though, but it is cleared, and we are told he should be back in. They think they hope he should be back in on the next offensive for series for South Carolina. All right, now they told us as last week they expected to get Corey Jenkins at least a series of quarterback. Why do you think it was Kimry that went in? I, I would have put Jenkins in. I, I'm a little surprised at that move myself. Obviously they had a reason for it, but I would have thought Jenkins would have come in in that situation. He's certainly the more experienced of the two to come in in a tough situation like that, which turned out giving Clemson fantastic field position. And his pass is caught by Bobby Williamson, tight end, reaching the 30. Andre Pinkins in his second start. The big play of the night for the Gamecocks, 70-yard touchdown to Williamson. 
And then this one went 45 yards, setting up another score. Corey Jenkins, all defense tonight, and that gets separated Kevin Youngblood from the ball in the first half. But most recently, he missed Whitehurst on Charlie's 11 yard touchdown keeper. And they quickly surround Rambert. Jonathan Martin active all night up from one of the spur positions. And it'll be third and five coming up. 100th time these two have gotten together. College football Saturday night presented by the U.S. Postal Service. How much can you ask for beyond this? 84,000 packing Death Valley, 20 to 20, 1040 to play between two arch rivals. And as usual, the population of Clemson has swelled from just about 12,000 to the mid 80s. I'll tell you how much more. South Carolina is asking that Pinkins' head get clear real quick. <laughs> Whitehurst pass caught at the 20 and breaking free Robinson. Dragged down inside the one. This kid, guys, is just poised in the pocket, steps up, and guns the ball. He's got a nice release. He's got a strong arm. Just stands, and he waits, and he lets it develop down the field. Right at the O-line, giving him time, but he has been hit tonight at times, but he hangs in there. When people are around him and he just flat out drills the ball in there. And a great job by Rimbert picking up the blitzer. I mean, he met him at the line of scrimmage and kept that pocket wide open for Whitehurst. They pack in two tight ends, first and goal from the one. And a little confusion on that exchange or what he intended to be an exchange to Chad Jasmine. A lot of times that ends up in a fumble. Well, the mistake was made by Chad Jasmine. What Tommy was motioning there is the fullback roll play. It's Bobby Bowden's favorite goal line play. The fullback is supposed to roll and he's supposed to go on a on a circular course. Jasmine ran straight ahead, ran right into his quarterback. Oh, they're lucky they didn't cough that one up. Second and goal. Option. Pitch to Rambert. Bernard Rambert's second touchdown of the night to put the Tigers back in front. Rambert had a superb series two plays ago. He was the blitz pickup guy. He stepped up, picked up the linebacker, smoked him, got the touchdown, and now he's limping. This is a rock'em sock'em football game. There'd be a lot of limping for the rest of tonight. Oh yeah. And for several days afterwards. A lot of ice bags after a game like this. Aaron Hunt. 27 to 20. For the first half, the defense is dominated, and now in the second half, touchdown after touchdown, and the most recent right here belongs to the senior Rambert. I don't think there was much shock that he was going to pitch it out there and let Rambert do the rush, but a nice team effort drive down the field. All right, he says, all right, they got it, let's go. But nice protection by the line, as you mentioned, nice pickup by that man right there on the blitz. Excellent poise in the pocket and throws by Whitehurst, the quarterback. A very nice series started by good field position after a defensive stand by Clemson's defense. 14 to nothing in the fourth quarter, favor of Clemson in this game. Bad news for Clemson, Whitehurst threw for 215 yards in the fourth quarter at Duke against the Duke team that was ahead of Clemson at that time. He set eight school records since he started playing. He set 15 freshman records throwing the football. He is a force as a redshirt freshman. Don Grill Pickens has the helmet back on. You assume he might be ready to come back in. And he has been a force in the third quarter. Now he's going to have to do it in the fourth. And they certainly don't have to, you know, heave the ball up, even though it's worked, <laughs> worked some early in this half. There's still plenty of time. Stephen Furr will kick to either Brewer or Gonzi Gray. Gray from the seven. After a bobble. After the 22. College football Thursday, 7.30 Eastern, presented by Circuit City, the Thanksgiving night tradition on ESPN. 
the Egg Bowl, Mississippi State and Ole Miss. And Ole Miss right now trying to upset LSU in the other Death Valley on ESPN 2. But the Bulldogs and the Rebels in a rivalry very similar to these two, Clemson and South Carolina. 7.30 Thanksgiving night on ESPN. Marker down, personal foul, Clemson on that return. Personal foul number six in this game. Personal foul, late hit against the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Who would like to give this game away the most? Who can shove somebody in the back, take a cheap shot after the play, and give field position? It is amazing the difference in the field position on the 20 yard line and at the 36 yard line. What it does for an offense if the offense can execute. Pinkins is back at quarterback after a couple of plays. Sitting out to uh, shake off some cobwebs. And out of the gun, looking complete to Ryan Brewer. Should have a first down to the 48. Jerry, why was it that Kimry and not Corey Jenkins replaced Dondrell Pinkins? I was told on the, here on the Gamecock bench that Corey Jenkins had a neck strain this week after the wait, last week's game in Florida and was held out of contact on Monday and Tuesday. And what limited practice he had this week was purely in the spur position on defense. He did not get a single snap on offense. They didn't feel comfortable putting him back in. All right. Kimberly's a senior, also well versed in the system. But Pinkins back. And the Gamecocks now down seven. After entering this quarter, leading by seven. He'll keep on the option across <laughs> midfield. I'll tell you what, they're not worried about it. They just they just turn him right up in there on an off tackle play and he runs for five or six yards. He's a tough guy and, and we need to watch him closely and see if he does have his mind completely clear. Sometimes you get partially cleared up and you get out there and then you start to make a mistake or two and you realize you aren't quite as lucid as you had hoped. He looks fine so far. Rambert doesn't though. Seem to pull something, twist something on that touchdown run. They continue to look at him. Second and seven. This is Terman. And the true freshman out of Washington, Georgia, picks up 14, brought down by the rover Altroid Bodrick. As we head down to the eight minute mark. Holtz in the SEC East. Once upon a time was three and one. He's seen that four game losing streak. Dropped the Gamecocks to three and five, five and six overall. Georgia last week clinching the East by beating Auburn. He will come out of the West. Nobody knows. Terman again. And the tackle by Brandon Jamison at the 30. So the bowl possibilities, assuming Carolina wins, and they've never been to three straight bowls, but they need some things to happen. First of all, they absolutely have to win this one to be eligible, and then they really need two Ole Miss losses. They need LSU to help them out tonight in Mississippi State Thursday night. They might be able to get perhaps the Music City bid. They also need some other conferences to help out as Irons carries on second down for instance coming into play this weekend the Big Ten which has seven slots had only five eligible teams Conference USA had four teams for five slots in the Mountain West had only two eligible teams for their four slots here are all the bowl tie ins for the SEC and the Gamecocks just hope if they can pull this one out and it's getting tougher by the minute they can somehow slip into one of those slots. Biggest third down in the game for the Gamecocks right here. Don't be surprised if Pickens keeps the ball. Nobody's covered Troy Williams in this half. Pickens looking his way and he dropped it. It's exactly what he was doing in warm-ups. Yep. He caught the deep ball. He caught the fly patterns just fine. But he's having trouble with balls across the middle just because he hasn't played much. See if Rodney Thomas gets a hand on this. Just enough. Yeah, that's his timing. By golly, he 
He really wasn't looking at the tip of the ball and when it was tipped it would have been a great catch to hang on to. That's awfully hard to do in the best of circumstances. So on comes Josh Brown and it is a fake. The throwback for Kimry is broken up. Clemson reads the fake and they're having none of it. Eric Sampson covering Eric Kimry and the fake does not work. So now the Tigers with a seven point lead and 625 to run off the clock in Death Valley. Well, rather than try a 47-yard field goal, South Carolina decides for the fake, and Clemson was not fooled, to no, say the least. Not at all. I mean, the long this year for Weaver is 38 yards. He's lining up for a 47-yard, and there's no doubt if I'm Clemson, I'm playing safe. I know the three points would have been great for, uh, for South Carolina. I understand that, but that much over the long for the year, I'm just hanging back playing safe. I mean, they, they picked that up easily. I would have rather just lined up in my offensive huddle Ran a play and tried to get the first down that way. Well, they've got three timeouts, and they will be eyeing the clock now as Yusuf Kelly takes the pitch and picks up about five. Therese Davis. Number five, Yusuf Kelly. Football great. <laughs> Washington State started the day hoping Michigan would knock off Ohio State and they would beat Washington and neither one may happen. Right her second down. Curry has a first down to the 42. Whitehurst showing remarkable poise for a redshirt freshman. He stood right there and let the clock run down. So he only had about three seconds left on the clock. Using every second he possibly could before he called for the snap, delivered the ball, took a shot, and he's right back up getting after it again. And then he stood right in there and took the shot, just as you said. And Bo it was Thompson. a Mike Boy. Golick form tackle. But he took it and with he completed the it. Flop on. <laughs> flop on's the key there. Right? Oh, yes. Another toss for Kelly. Joseph Kelly to midfield. And he hears it from the 84,000 every time he touches it. Yusuf keeps the clock going inside five minutes. Sports Center will follow. And another Buckeye nail biter. They have had uh, one after another, but they have passed every test. Larry Johnson, you won't believe what he did in one half for Penn State today against Michigan State. All the rivalries and upsets. They'll have for you on Sports Center. 
Clemson's offensive line is showing more toughness and grit than we've seen from them in recent weeks. They're doing an excellent job of moving the ball, knocking people back, taking it down the, the field. Somebody, somebody got thrown out of the game. Well, this is kind of the tone that this game started with. With about a half dozen personal foul penalties, late hit penalties. It looked like it might be a graduate assistant or equipment assistant, an assistant trainer or some. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll have to find out. But an apparent ejection. But luckily, you know, 15 yards didn't come along with it. Well, yep. that's amazing. Yep. If you penalize, if you throw somebody out, that's that's normally a penalty. So now, Whitehurst again widening the play clock. Before tossing. Again to Yusuf Kelly and Kelly will try to stay in bounds and what a job he got right to the sideline and then tiptoed backwards and made the first down that was brilliant I have seen so many even veteran good backs get allow themselves to be pushed out of he runs up tiptoes somebody in the white shirt should have had the presence to grab him and get him out of bounds they didn't do that watch this beautiful tight rope. Athletic ability, presence of mind, Yusef Kelly. That away, Yusef. If you're a Clemson person, you gotta love that, because there goes another 30 seconds off the clock. Both teams have all three timeouts, and the Gamecocks are gonna have to start using theirs. A well coached, soon. excuse me, David, but a well coached offensive unit here. Brad Scott has done a good job to teach these kids how to have poise and run this clock down. Kelly again. They have basically put the clock killing job in the hands of Kelly, the redshirt sophomore, and not the senior, Bernard Rambert, who has a couple of touchdowns. So now, if you're Carolina, you've got to start tackling the ball, really. You're, you're, you got to uh, start knocking, you got to start knocking the ball loose, and you got to start using your timeouts. The offensive line for Clemson is taking over. And South Carolina better think about beating the man in front of him as well and getting in the ball here. Exactly. I mean, Clemson is just lining up, punching him in the mouth, and saying, we're going to run it right. out and end this game right here. And the tough guys in this game were supposed to be the South Carolina defensive front. The Clemson offensive front has taken a front. To that suggestion, and they are knocking them back. Tommy Sharp and the guys controlling the clock here in the second half, and they're now over 400 total yards. Jasmine inside the 40. Now, when do you start using the timeouts? Now, and I mean, <laughs> now Lou Holtz knows an awful lot more about football than I do, but if it's me, I take the timeouts and I'd leave this time on the clock. Don't let them just, well, he, they took one. 2.27 to go, and they will need to stop a third and two when they come back. It was, a, it was a, a, like a, a GA. A GA was standing <laughs> talking to Skip Holtz. A GA was standing talking to Skip Holtz, and the referee turned around and apparently threw the GA out. Now people around here said they didn't hear him say anything. He was talking to Skip Holtz, but apparently uh, the referee thought otherwise. So it was a GA they tossed out. All right. Thanks, they, they won't identify. They won't identify who it was. They just now, didn't cost him 15. So was Jerry going to do that? Huh? Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't 15 with it. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that a surprise? Very. I didn't know there was a rule that you could eject without, without 15. A, a, yeah. <laughs> 
Two twenty seven to go and Clemson ready for a third and two. Gamecocks have two timeouts left. Have to get a stop here. Kelly with room. Great blocking first down. Plenty more to the thirty one yard line. The Tigers had to execute and they blew the Gamecocks off the line. Just a terrific job by number 79 Gary Bird the left tackle Cedric Johnson the left guard Cedric pulling around kicking out it's the old G play. Read perfectly Chad Jasmine a nice a nice block there number 10 the fullback and Yusef Kelly took it up in there and they do that a couple more times. And yep. You can turn out the lights because the party will be over. Thank you for not singing that and you're so well they are just. Nothing fancy. They're just flat out running them over. I wouldn't do that to Dandy. He, he deserves better. <laughs> Nobody could do it like Dandy. And now the Tigers will use their first time out. Let's check in with Reese Davis. Wow. So Washington State loses early to Ohio State and late to their intrastate rivals. That is that's why you love Saturday in the fall. Yeah, game. You love Saturday. You love rivalries. Oh. Rivalries get these streaks going and it gets in people's mind. And right now the Huskies have got the upper hand on Washington State. They've beaten them. I think that's five in a row isn't it. That is. They just got a thing on. Them. Well Ohio State sits. They know they're going to the Fiesta Bowl. Miami two more games. Syracuse. And Virginia Tech to see if they go. And Thanksgiving night, as per our ESPN tradition, the Egg Bowl, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss will get together in college football Thursday, 7:30 Eastern, presented by Circuit City. A minute 53 to go. First down, Clemson 32-yard line of Carolina. And they continue to put the clock eating in the hands of Yusuf Kelly. I'd say he's up to the job. And I tell you again, Bill, presence of mind, he's running down the sideline and getting grabbed. He leaned back toward the state in bounds to keep the clock running after they set the chains. Boy, oh boy, they are just blocking. Again, nice running, but the blocking up front is fantastic. He's staying yeah. in bounds. They're, I mean, just, they're just whipping people. Good job by everybody up there. The tight end. Nice job knocking him back. That's Ben Hall, number 87. 20 yards for Kelly. Now nine carries, 63 yards for Yusuf. Everything going to the left. Toss sweeps and G plays to the left. Just hang out 10 seconds on the play clock. 47 of those 63 for Kelly have been on this drive. Comes and tries to clinch it. Kelly coming right this time. Runs over Martin. Inside the 10, down near the three, but a flag down at the line. That time he wanted the end zone. <laughs> well, he's disappointed that he got knocked out of bounds yeah. and didn't score. He's a good back. Flag here, probably holding. Well, that's the thing that you don't want most of all is that penalty. That walks you back and gives just a glimmer of hope to folks you've been knocking off the ball and driving them and Tommy's sick about it. Tommy Bowden knows that that's the one thing now that could give a little spark of life. Now if there should be a turnover and South Carolina gets the ball, they got a shot because they're oh, not no. down there on their own yes, two yard line. The field is 10 yards on the spot of the foul. Still first down. Yusuf Kelly with Rambert graduating may very well be the feature back of the future. Just a sophomore, redshirted last year. Back for a couple more seasons. And just about single handedly leading this clock eating final drive for Clemson. Good sized kid, 225, as you said, Davey. He can he can be have a little power, has a little bit of quickness as well. South Carolina's not using their timeouts, which comes as a great shot to me. Yeah, they've got two left. Yeah. 
I mean, I, you got to use them. You got to use them, I would think. Jasmine down to the 17, and the clock rolls down near 40 seconds. Now it will stop at 41 seconds. There's time on the clock. You got to use the timeout. You got it. Anything. You, you try for anything at this well, point. Well, the ball could pop up in Absolutely. the air, and you pick it off and run the distance and uh, go into OT here. I've seen it happen many times, and you have too. Don't forget Sunday night football tomorrow night. The matchup of the Colts and the Broncos. Peyton Manning and Indianapolis hitting their stride. And they take on the best in the West Denver Club at 8.30 Eastern Sunday Night Football on ESPN. Also available on ESPN Deportes. What about Clinton Portis out of Miami? Well, Rookie of the year? Well, let me tell you, he, he's certainly up for it, but again, it's that old line for Denver. I mean, pick a back that, that's done well behind that line, but they have lost Tommy Nalen for the year. Efron Salam has been uh, injured as well, so lot, a couple of guys there. So that line has been a big part of it, but Portis has done great. Julius Peppers may be up for uh, Rookie of the year, though his suspension is upcoming. He has 11 sacks. He's having a nice year. We have a Mike Anderson and Alandis Gary. Yeah. And, uh, and when Terrell, Terrell Davis, Davis they've all done well. Yeah. Of course, they're all good backs. That, that O line does a fantastic scheme, and that O line, that run blocking they do in Denver is, is fantastic. Put the, the Colts have been playing very well the last couple of weeks. They've just put a whooping on the Eagles a couple of weeks ago. Clemson's going to be able to run it out, taking the knee now. In the victory formation, and the Gamecocks with one more timeout, and they'll call it with 38 seconds. So for Clemson, this would be five out of the last six over Carolina. Lou Holtz's team entered the fourth quarter with a seven point lead, and the Tigers have touchdowns on the ground from Whitehurst and Rambert to first tie it, and then. Go up 27 20 and they have squeezed the life out of this clock and Lou Holtz hoping to get it back into the hands of his offense one more time. It looks like it will not happen. Well the streak continues the team entering this game with the better record and Clemson has the better record at six and five. Since 1981 has been 15 two and one the team with the better record and every year since. 97 the team with the better record is one so Clemson's about to continue that but There's they're almost stat. always very entertaining yeah, game another so stat too though South Carolina since 1970 when they've beaten Clemson they're 0 for 8 and trying to repeat that victory the next year they're now 0 for 9 assuming that Clemson goes ahead and runs this clock out this is everybody's favorite formation <laughs> you love to practice this. You love to get a chance to run it. It's a sick feeling when the group across from you is getting in it. Unlikely method of victory in the fourth quarter by Clemson, physically out toughing the Gamecocks. Well, they'll count it down and hope that they can keep any more extracurricular stuff from marring the end of this game and. They also hope they keep the students off the field for another 24 seconds. But the Tigers on the field as they celebrate another win over South Carolina. Forget it. Here comes everybody. <laughs> Free for all time. Okay, let's clear the field and run that last play. <laughs> oh, look at all that. Look at all that. Have a safe trip home. Another win in the Palmetto State rivalry for the Tigers. 27 to 20, a come from behind job with. Two fourth quarter touchdowns to eliminate the Gamecocks from postseason consideration. They finished five and seven. Clemson now seven and five as they await their postseason destination. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For summaries and stats of our game, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet. For Bill Curry, Mike Golick, Dr. Jerry Punch, and our entire ESPN crew, Dave Barnett, so long from Death Valley. Coming up, Kevin Frazier and Rich Eisen have sports night.
yesterday. Well, Tommy Bowden, for the third time in four years, you have beaten your arch rival, South Carolina. Congratulations. It, it, it'll, it'll make the year go a lot smoother, I can tell you. It's, but the players played really. I was real proud of our seniors. It's frustrating this year, but they kept the team together. The seniors were awesome. But how about your redshirt freshman quarterback, Charlie Waters? What a composure. Well, it really did. The Maryland was a fast-paced game. He made some adjustments to it, and uh, I thought he responded real well. Earlier in the week, there were some people who questioned your team's toughness. You said at halftime, let's see if you can show them that you are tough in the second half, and they responded. Yeah, we, we, we ran the ball out, and we did it by a very physical ground game. So I was real proud of our offensive line and, and Yusuf Kelly, number five. Hey, Coach, go celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you, Jerry.
he can't walk. He's so drunk, he can't walk. Take it! 